we played hard. We set the standard. I believe we had a sense of brotherhood here. As a coach, I believe you have great impact on people's lives. It's been a wonderful trip, and I wouldn't have traded it for anything. Well, for the history of the program, we started in 1892. Uh, we had a, uh, a new history professor, Warren Detweiler, who had played uh, college football, and he wanted to keep playing when he came here. Up through the, uh, the First World War, we were very successful in football. But then in 1947, once again, looking for a head coach who could really start a program, build us up to what we wanted to be in the post-war era, and that was Robert Redman. Well, Coach Redman taught me and everybody to be resilient and work hard, and you'd end up a winner. You know, it was well organized and very professional. We had a good team. We had good ball players, and we had good coaches. He just molded the program into one of the most successful in the country. Uh, our first two undefeated seasons ever. Uh, we were one of the top teams in, in the whole country in 1948, undefeated again in 1951. And uh, Redmond just uh, really put us on the map. He was uh, just young. Uh, he had fire in his eyes. He could, he, he could only go one way uh, because we had a dismal uh, record prior to his coming to Bloomsburg. I played football for 19 years total, and I must say that I have never been through a tougher preseason football camp than the one with Coach Landis. I mean, we were the toughest, most fit guys that you would ever meet in a football program. Well, he was, he was tough. He was not a warm and fuzzy coach <laughs> by any means, uh, but fair and tough and well organized and everything had a purpose to it. And it was, I mean, it was clear from the start that as, as soon as the talent reached his coaching ability, that this was gonna be a special program and eventually it was. I remember when they first contacted us, the, uh, they had just gotten beaten by Millersville 72 to nothing. And then um, George Landis was hired as head coach with uh, Lou Marins on as assistant. And they started the recruiting process and they were going to turn things around. They're going to bring in a lot of uh, large freshman class. Uh, football and, and development of a team is a tough, it's a tough operation. Some days you get hurt. Some days you lose your position. Some days the coach recruits somebody that's better than you. And with all that in mind, you still, have to, you still have to count on what's best for the team. They grew up to be four-year starters on that 1985 championship team, and uh, I think of that often from a perspective of what, what experience brings, and it's really, it really boils down to you. The more reps you get, the more snaps you have on Saturday afternoon, truly measure the kind of football player you are. Mike Glovis uh, sticks out as the, as the kind of individual that uh, uh, worked real hard and was uh, skillful at his trade. He was a quarterback. George brought in Jay Dedea and Jay became the starter and Mike sort of took a back seat. Uh, Jay gets injured. He jumps in and uh, wins three or four games for us to keep the 85 dream alive. A lot of times in that situation you quit. But I said, you know what, this is my team. You know, these are my guys and I'm still going to be here because this is a special team. And after, in the third game of the season, Jay got hurt. So the next seven games of that year I started, and it was my senior year, and if I would have quit, I wouldn't have experienced it. You know, talk about some adversity. We had a young man named Vernon Rochester who was paralyzed in his sophomore year, and he was part of that 85 team. From the first play from the line of scrimmage, Vernon Rochester, I pitched him back the ball on a toss sweep. He went around the end and was hit. As I ran up to him, went to pick him up and said, Vernon, you know, well, let's get up, let's go. Don't let him see you're hurt. Don't let him think you're hurt. And he just looked at me and said, Glow, he says, I can't move. And we were young kids. I was 18-year-old sophomore at that time. And I think for everybody on the team, we grew up. The team came together and we ended up finishing second in the Eastern Conference with very young people on the team. 
I had a, a vision that was, was helped to develop along with some people here on campus and together we kind of painted the picture. But it took a bunch of kids to believe in that and uh, believe in me and believe in the other coaches and, and have confidence. They started to believe a little bit more and I probably did as well. Not only his Westchester experience, but the experience of him as an individual. And, and he's a guy that is uh, tough beyond belief, uh, but passionate about his team, passionate about his football. Uh, he is a nuts and bolts offensive guy. He has transformed Bloomsburg University's offense. And if you go back and look at any of the statistics from any of the years, from Robert B. Redman all the way up through, Danny Hale's offensive statistics will jump right out at you. He's won more games than any other coach in the history of Bloomsburg. He's just an outstanding model for a coach. If I had sons and wanted them to play college football, I would want them to play for Danny Hale because he's more than a coach, he teaches values. I played college football at Westchester University. It was Westchester State College at the time, 1964 through 68. Freshmen weren't eligible, so you really only had three years of varsity play, and I was fortunate to uh, play um, all four years and had a real, real good college career playing in two Tangerine Bowls myself. I have a beautiful wife. Uh, we're pushing 42 years here, and um, we have four children. The two latter ones, uh, graduated from Bloomsburg. I was a state college uh, product myself, first generation uh, player, first generation really to go to college. Uh, and so I know the importance of it, uh, of being a student athlete, and I subscribe to that. We do work very hard. We're going to both in the weight room as well as we want in the classroom so they're productive citizens when they graduate. We don't belittle our players, we don't cuss them, we don't, I don't feel you have to do those type things in order to get the most out of kids. So I'm looking for assistant coaches that are that same way. I'm able to attract the players who really want to buy into that belief system and work hard. And I believe the end product, you don't come just to win. He wants them to be men of integrity. He wants them to be good husbands, to be good fathers, to be good sons, uh, uh, to be good people in the community. My belief as a football coach, as a coach period, I believe you have great impact on people's lives. I take my job very seriously as a football coach and I think certainly at this level of Division II, I think we have great influence on young men for the rest of their lives and that's why I'm here. I think the true satisfaction comes not necessarily with that record, which is always, obviously is unbelievable, but I think that people's lives being changed for the better is where his victories really are. I get a sense that every player uh, that played under Danny wakes up Saturday morning and looks at the newspaper and opens the sports page and sees during the fall, did Bloomsburg win? And they do that because of Danny Hale. Uh, that's his legacy. Westchester coming on a blitz. Latour, play action. They get the blitz man on a block, and Latour goes long. 